I'm sorry, but I need to stay in the hospital for a while. After a recent checkup, my doctor suggested me for further examination. So, I decided to undergo a thorough examination which I need to be hospitalized. So, please take care of our house for a while. Really? Oh, I'm worried. It's just a precautionary examination. So, don't worry too much. Thank you though. No, what I'm worried about isn't you, but the household stuff. What? I mean, it implies I'll have to do the housework, right? No, I can't do it. It's too much trouble, and I might have to bring things to the hospital during your stay. Ugh, why can't you take care of yourself more? His heartless words hurt me a lot, I regretted getting married to him more than ever. However, his cruel behavior didn't stop there. He continued. Well, you don't have to come back even after you're discharged. What do you mean? I have been thinking for a while now, women are expensive creatures. Even this time. Even if it's just for a checkup, it costs money, doesn't it? Lately, I've regretted marrying you. So you don't have to come back. I don't want to see the face of a burden who can't earn money. The moment I heard those words, I decided to get a divorce. I couldn't see myself walking through life with someone who couldn't cherish his wife. I understand, I'll give you a divorce. Oh, really? You'd better think it through. I'm serious. Let's get it done tomorrow morning. By the way, don't worry, you're not going to see me again. What? What do you mean? He had a surprised look on his face. Probably because he didn't understand the situation. Besides, he didn't know everything about me. I have one secret that I've been keeping from him. He would surely be surprised if he found out. About three years ago, my husband and I had an arranged marriage. Originally, I had planned to get married by the age of 28, but life doesn't always go as planned. Before I knew it, I was over 30, and I seemed to be the only one around not married. My mother kept urging me to get married while she was still alive, and I began to feel anxious. It's not that I didn't want to get married. It's just that my relationships never lasted until the topic of marriage came up. There was one guy I thought might be the one if things continued as they were. However, in the second year of our relationship, we began to lose contact. One day, when I visited his house unannounced, I found a strange woman inside. Furthermore, there were people who seemed to be her parents. That's when I became certain. I had been abandoned. After that, I decided to choose a surefire method and went through an arranged marriage, meeting my current husband. When I first met my husband, I had a good impression of his calmness and gentle demeanor. Since I was in a hurry to get married, I thought he would be the right man for me and we proceeded to discuss marriage. My parents seemed relieved, thinking, finally. Our relationship was going well and we got married. Ending my single life was a good thing but my husband gradually changed after marriage. He started suggesting things like marriage rules, and although I initially thought it was a good idea, it became more and more troublesome. At one point, I broke one of those rules, and my husband, somewhat irritated, criticized me, saying, It's a rule, right? Let's do it right. We're a married couple, like a team, right? So, we need to cooperate. Although he spoke passionately, I honestly thought he was quite a hassle. At that time, I forced myself to agree, thinking, yeah, he's right. However, this incident became a turning point, and my husband started speaking bluntly to me. At first, I apologized and tried to follow the rules. For instance, I must prepare for a bath 15 minutes before he comes home. Also, dinner must be ready so he can start eating as soon as he gets out of the bath. His work was only 30 minutes away from home. When he calls on his way home, I have to prepare the bath 15 minutes after his call so it's ready when he arrives. Honestly, it was quite a hassle. Why can't he make it simple? It's just a bath, he can get ready when he comes home. I wasn't too happy when his criticisms became too much, and I finally complained. Sorry, but I have things to do too, and there are times I can't meet your expectations. 
Every day is not the same, you know. So, can I do things without worrying about time too much? I'll try have the bath ready by the time you come home. In response, my husband, seemingly taken aback for a moment, looked at me with wide eyes. Without saying a word, he left the room and headed to the bedroom. Did I go too far? I started to feel a bit remorseful when my husband returned from the bedroom. When I tried to speak, he put something on the table as if slamming it. When I saw it, I was shocked. What, what is this? What does it mean? Don't you get it? This is a divorce paper to cancel our marriage. I'm not asking about that. I mean, are you serious about bringing this out? And you've already filled it out. Does that mean you intended to divorce from the beginning? That's right. I prepared a divorce paper along with a marriage certificate even before we got married. After all, couples are originally strangers living together. It's not like living with family, living with strangers can lead to problems. So, I prepared for it any time. Besides, when we got married, I made it clear that rules must be followed. If you can't do that, there's no choice but to divorce. That's. Then I realized his kindness he showed when we first met was fake. I can't believe he had already prepared for a divorce. Thinking that, suddenly, I felt miserable, realizing how excited I was about the marriage. Should I just sign the divorce paper right in front of me and end it? However, I calmly thought about it. If I divorce now, my parents, as well as friends and relatives, will undoubtedly be disappointed. Besides, considering my age. If I divorce now, I don't even know if I'll find the next partner. Guess there's no other choice. I'm sorry, it's my fault. From now on, I'll do as you wish. So, can you reconsider the divorce? Hold on. Apologizing with that attitude? You won't convey sincerity unless you get down on your knees. Reluctantly and with a sense of frustration, I GPT down on my knees and apologized to my husband. He looked satisfied and warned me to be more careful from now on before he left the room. After my husband left, I was so overwhelmed with frustration that tears welled up and I couldn't move for a while. I never expected to be treated so unreasonably. Even if it was to prevent a divorce. I couldn't believe my own husband was capable of such things. From that day, I lived cautiously. Every single day, I was under too much pressure to be on time and hardly had time for my own. It became a life completely centered around my husband. He seemed content that I had become more devoted, but I was physically and mentally exhausted. However, one of my friends gave me some relief from my troubled heart. Her name is Sandra. We've been friends since high school, and we still meet up occasionally. By the way, I had told Sandra about my husband's recent behavior. While she didn't outright say I should get a divorce, she mentioned that if things continued as they were, he would only use me like a servant. Perhaps getting a divorce would be the better option. However, considering my mental state, Sandra, who cared for me, suggested something one day. Why don't you help me with my work? Your work? But I have no experience and no computer skills. Don't worry. You'll pick it up quickly. Erica, you're quick on the uptake, right? You'll be fine. Sandra currently runs an online shop and it seems to bring in a substantial income. She once told me it brings in a substantial income. I thought she managed it alone without hiring anyone, so why did she ask me? She said she needed an extra pair of hands. Looking back, Sandra must have noticed my suffocating daily life and reached out to help. I wanted a break, so I agreed without hesitation. I debated whether to tell my husband about this, but Sandra advised me to keep it quiet. Because if he finds out and disapproves, you won't have anywhere to escape to. Cheating is bad, but isn't it okay to have a little secret? If he says anything, just tell him you're visiting me. And so, I started working at Sandra's home. It mainly involved computer work, and at first, things didn't go as smoothly as I wanted. I had to rely on Sandra for guidance, but gradually, I got used to it. Of course, when I returned home, my life still revolved around my husband, but having a place to relax began to ease my feelings. Plus, 
the income started coming in reasonably well. However, we cautiously adjusted my income to avoid him finding out. However, due to daily stress or other factors, my health deteriorated at one point. I was recommended for further tests during a hospital visit. The doctor advised that it would be better to undergo the examination. When I told my husband about it after he came home, the response was incredibly heartless. How long is this test hospitalization going to take? Who's going to take care of everything around me during that time? Well, I'm not sure about that. Hey, don't just make a casual decision to stay in the hospital on your own. You make sure to find someone to do your chores, like getting the bath ready 15 minutes early. Well, then, maybe I should ask my parents for help. Give me a break. If you bring your mother into this, I'll be in a tough spot, won't I? Can't you find someone more convenient? Well, it's impossible. Sorry, but you'll have to handle it on your own. In the end, my husband reluctantly agreed and complained for a while. When you're discharged, you better get to work, no slacking off. I recalled a phrase Sandra once told me. It went something like, It went something like, it's okay to give your opinion if he was wrong or unreasonable. If that's why he's suggesting divorce, isn't that his problem? Remembering this, I disagreed with my husband for the first time in a while. I'm going in for tests, you know? Can't you say something caring, like take care or something? What? Even with the house chores, can't you manage on your own? I'm not asking you to handle the chores of a large family. I'm just asking you to do your share. If you can't even do that, you're like a little child who can't do anything on their own. Actually, worse than that, because even a child can learn if taught. After being patiently silent for so long, I could no longer hold back my words. What did you say? Have you forgotten that you begged for my forgiveness the other day? If you say something like that, I can divorce you at any time. Is that what you want? Yes, I don't mind. How pathetic that you think you can still act like a king. All right, fine. You don't have to come back after being discharged. I don't need someone useless who can never make money. Understood. Let's get a divorce then. Since there's some time until the hospitalization, I'll proceed with the paperwork as much as possible. Is that okay? You've said it, there's no turning back now. If you apologize and write a pledge or something now, I'll forgive you. But if not, you're on your own. I have no intention of apologizing. I'm divorcing you. And so, the divorce was decided before hospitalization. On the day of my admission, when my husband was about to leave for work in the morning. Hey, you've been visiting your friend Sandra a lot, right? From now on, you won't be able to play around with her anymore. You'll have to earn your own money, so there won't be any time to play. Or maybe your friend is also a woman who plays around with her husband's money. That husband is not a good judge of women. A wife who just plays around is nothing more than a grain waster. Probably an incompetent husband who submits to his wife's whims. Well, do your best to earn money? My husband left triumphantly, unaware that I was working. Finally, I won't have to adjust the income. He does not understand what awaits him. His position is the one in jeopardy, not mine. After that, I went through the tests. I was quite nervous. I thought about what would happen if something bad was found. However, the results showed nothing, and I was able to be discharged soon. Sandra came to pick me up on the day of my discharge. With her help, I started working at Sandra's house from the next day. I had already signed a lease for an apartment, and now all that was left was to move out my stuff from my husband's house. After finishing the move, I returned home. The next day, after finishing work at Sandra's house, when I checked my phone, there were numerous missed calls. The caller was my husband. I thought I might have forgotten something in the house, so I answered the call. Hello? Don't call me multiple times while I'm working. What do you want? Hey, you. You're the one who snitched, right? Huh? What are you talking about all of a sudden? That friend of yours, Sandra, 
Her husband is an area manager at my work. Oh, really? You knew it, didn't you? Well, who knows? Are you trying to get revenge? You tried to ruin me with that tip-off. You're truly a ridiculous woman. You can say whatever you want. Well, we're not a married couple, by the way, did you call just to say that? At that moment, my husband hesitated. Oh, no, wait. I mean, can't you clear up the misunderstanding with the area manager for me? What do you mean? I'm saying, can't you explain to the area manager that it was a misunderstanding from you? Otherwise, it'll be awkward when I meet him at meetings and such. If you do it, I'll even pay you. Hmm. Is that how you ask someone for a favor? What? Is that the attitude you have when you apologize? If you're apologizing, you need to sincerely apologize from the bottom of your heart, like, on your knees to the ground kind of apology. These were the words my husband once said to me. I wouldn't let him get away with saying he couldn't do it. Ugh. Oh, switch to a video call, please? I can't see through just a phone call. My husband switched to a video call, revealing his appearance. I deeply apologize for this incident. Please. Clear up the misunderstanding with the area manager. My husband went down on his knees and even touched his head to the ground. However, I had to repay twice what I received. Oh, sorry, it's cutting off. Too bad I couldn't see it. The misunderstanding won't be cleared up. Ciao. Wait, just a moment. I hang up the phone. And so, this incident came to a close. After that, my ex-husband became the subject of gossip among other employees at the meeting that the area manager attended, making him uncomfortable. He requested a transfer. He was transferred to another region. He couldn't retire because he had been promoted to a higher position with a good salary. Although rumors were spreading at his new location, he had nowhere to go. I heard that he works quietly now. I continue working with Sandra and have seen a significant boost in performance. In the future, we plan to expand and venture into various businesses. I'm truly grateful to Sandra. Without Sandra, I might still be a servant even now. If Sandra ever gets into trouble, it's now my turn to help. It's the only way I can repay her kindness.